check this out. The enthusiasm gap that Democrats have worried about, at least for now, entirely erased. Democrats enthusiastic about Kamala Harris's candidacy, just like Republicans are for Trump. And this is a striking number. 49% of independents say they are enthusiastic about Kamala Harris. Compare that number to Trump's, and you see how this race has been turned on its head, Robin. It's actually possible we'll see higher turnout than what we saw in 2020, which is what you pointed out was record turnout. Things that matter like reproductive freedom, reproductive justice, uh, democracy and freedom as itself, they're going to play a big role in how voters lean in as we get closer to November. Listen, Kamala Harris's momentum is real. She's only been the Democratic Party's presumptive nominee for a little over a week and already so much has changed. A lot has gone in her favor and things will continue to get better for her if current trends hold. And the best part about all of this is Donald Trump has no idea how to react seeing these polls surge and seeing this election kind of slip away from him. Uh, we'll talk about his reaction in a moment, but spoiler alert, he's losing his shit. So, you know, on Truth Social, he's switching between lying Kamala and crazy Kamala and I've seen him use communist Kamala, so he doesn't know what name to use for her. And when it comes to attacks, he really doesn't have anything to say with regard to policy. So he's trying to attack her for the worst reason ever. And he's doubling down on perhaps the most disastrous attack he's ever used against another candidate. So we'll get to all of that. But for now, I just kind of want to show you where we are with regard to this Harris v. Trump race. So according to this poll conducted by Redfield and Bolton, Kamala's approval rating has surged to the point where she now has a net approval rating of plus one for the first time since 2021, which is a really big deal. Now, average polls still have her down by about 11 points, but it's trending positively overall, which is a very good sign for somebody running for president. Now, additionally, Reuters reports that a morning consult poll shows that she has completely erased Trump's lead in swing states. And now she narrowly is leading in four of those states and tied in one. But keep in mind that they're both statistically tied in every state, excluding Michigan, where they find her leading by 11. Although I don't actually think that's correct. I'm assuming that this poll is an outlier or a sampling error because this is going to be a really close race. So I can't imagine her winning Michigan by 11. But regardless, she's performing very well, needless to say. When you consider the fact that Biden was losing in every single swing state just a couple of weeks ago. Now, from that same morning consult poll, we got one of the most positive signs yet. Biden's decision to not run for re-election is having a very positive effect on turnout. More than 60 percent of black and Gen Z voters now say they're much more or somewhat more likely to vote now that he's not in the race. And that number is more than 50 percent for Hispanic voters and over 40 percent for all registered voters. And I can't stress this enough. Voter turnout is what decides every single election. So Kamala Harris is doing what Biden wasn't able to do. She is driving turnout, which is crucial for Democrats, especially in battleground states. Now, these results are consistent in a poll conducted by The New York Times and Siena College. Look at how interesting this is. They're comparing Biden's advantage against Donald Trump to Harris's advantage. And among 18 to 29 year olds, she's at plus 29. That is absolutely huge. Now she's also at plus 14 with millennials and Gen Xers. And at the very bottom, you see that she's at plus 12 with independents. That is a massive, massive deal. Now we're not going to dive into this poll here, but as media, it explains way more Democrats are now satisfied with Harris as the nominee compared to Biden. And they're basing this off of an AP NORC poll. Now, last but not least, I do want to look at general election polls. This isn't necessarily the most important because this is basically where they stand with regard to the popular vote and elections aren't decided by the popular vote. They're decided by the Electoral College. Regardless, on average, Trump leads by a point and a half, but Harris is reversing that trend too. Trump was beating Biden in almost all head-to-head -head matchups, and now Harris leads in three, Trump leads in four, and they are tied in two. And if this trend continues, she could actually pass him nationally by the convention in August, where she's then expected to get another bump. Now, a lot of this could be a smokescreen. It could be due to the fact that everybody's kind of in a honeymoon period and a lot can change between now and November because polls are generally fickle and they're just a snapshot in time of where the race is right now. But if you step back and you look at the bigger picture thus far, one thing is absolutely undeniable. Harris is surging.
Now, I want to go back to the importance of turnout and play a clip from Harry Anton of CNN, because even though Harris is still the underdog in this race, and if the election were held today, Trump is still the favorite, what Harry Anton says here is really important because this right here could prove make or break for Harris. We were looking at a much, potentially much lower turnout this go around in 2024 than 2020. So this is almost certain to vote in the election. You look post debate 2024, look at that. It was just 55% of registered voters. That was actually the same as it was pre debate 55%. It was significantly lower than it was in 2020 during the summer when it was 60%. But look at where we are now. We are now at 62% after the RNC after Kamala Harris gets into this race, and that is actually a higher number than we, what we saw during the summer of 2020 when it was 60%. So at this particular point, as we look at the math right now, if we are trusting what voters are saying, it's actually possible we'll see higher turnout than we, what we saw in 2020, which is what you pointed out was record turnout. So quite the shift here. It's not just enthusiasm. It's actually people saying that they're going to go out and almost certainly vote. <laughs> if you believe what voters are saying <laughs> with that guy. I mean, if we don't, then this is all not going to work. <laughs> well, you know, it's all funny money anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, why? Why? Why is it? Well, you know, throughout this entire cycle, We've been pointing out that there were a ton of voters who dislike both Biden and Donald Trump. So pre RNC, right? 20% in the New York Times polling, 20% in Ipsos polling. Look at where we are today. Look how dramatically these numbers have dropped. Look at this New York Times down to 8% who say they dislike Harris and Trump. How about Ipsos? The same pattern, 7%. This is very different now than what we saw prior. It looks a lot more like 2020 when it was just 3% who disliked both major party, major party candidates and very much unlike what we saw in 2016 when it was 18% in the exit polls, which looked a lot more like what we saw earlier in the year. So the fact is voters are much more apt to at least like one of the candidates. And I think that's part of the reason why voters are much more likely to turn out because if you dislike both major party candidates, why actually turn out and vote? But that was what RFK Jr. was counting on. That, yep. that were, I guess, on some level. That was what he was counting on. In fact, that was his core group of voters, right? Those who dislike both Joe Biden right. and Donald Trump. So what's happened to him now? Look at this. He was at 15 percent December. He was at 10 percent post debate. He has dropped all the way down to 5 percent. The fact that Harrison and he Trump, is not happy. With he him. is not happy about it. He is not happy about it. The fact that can't that the voters actually do like one of the major party candidates really is devastating his campaign. He might not even reach 5%. I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up with 2 or 3%. In other words, we are now living in a different world, politically speaking. The America before Biden dropped out is very different than the America after Biden dropped out of the race. We could have changed the trajectory of America, not to sound hyperbolic, but I mean, it's true. That was such a monumental decision that now everything has changed. So if these trends continue, that we're seeing with current polling, I like Kamala's chances a lot. Now, having said that, never ever get overly confident because polls do tend to tighten up as we get closer to elections. And there's so many variables. There's so many unknowns. Things can change. Currently, Trump is still the likely winner if the election were held today. So never get cocky. Always assume that you're going to lose and act like you're uh, behind, even if you're ahead. Like, just don't get overly confident. That's what I'm trying to say. But We've all been pretty doom and gloom lately, and after dealing with months of a likely Trump victory, I, I think that it's okay for us to just take a little bit of hopium, right? Just a little bit, but let ourselves have this, you know? Now, I have to mention something else. People like myself, you know, when we called for Biden to drop out, we were told to shut up because we were apparently helping Donald Trump. If you go back to the videos and look at some of those comments, a lot of you were a little bit mean, right? Now, I'm not going to say I told you so because I want to be polite and I don't want to violate the ceasefire between liberals and leftists that we all implicitly agree to. But I will say this. We shouldn't just automatically assume that all criticism of a politician that we like comes from bad faith people. And when I criticize Democrats personally, it's not an endorsement of Republicans. It's intended to be constructive. That's key. So if you're a liberal who often tries to shut down good faith critiques from leftists like myself, maybe consider in the future whether or not there's some truth or value to what they're saying. That's all that I ask for. Now, on that note, notice how we're also kind of saying that we would really hope that Kamala chose Tim Waltz as VP because that would be really good for excitement and the feeling that we're feeling now would be turned up to an 11. 
you know, maybe maybe take that into consideration as well, although none of us have control of that. But, you know, if you can exert pressure on Kamala, Tim Waltz is a great pick. But I made you wait too long. So we're going to get to Trump's reaction because it is so goddamn good. Now, there's a lot of coping, a lot of seething going on, as you can imagine, if you look at his Truth Social timeline, and it's just endless shit talking about how Kamala Harris wants to defund the police and how she's a failed border czar. But here's some highlights that I want to show you because these tweets demonstrate just how scared he is currently. Quote, Crazy Kamala Harris, voted the worst vice president in American history by what standard, needed a concert to bring people into the Atlanta arena, and they started leaving five minutes into her speech. I don't need concerts or entertainers. I just have to make America great again. Okay, bud, keep telling yourself that. Another one about the uh, rally in Atlanta. Elias Fox News putting on crazy Kamala Harris rallies. Why did they allow perverts at the failed and disgraced Lincoln Project to advertise on Fox News? Even Mr. Kellyanne Conway, a man so badly hurt and humiliated by his wife she she must have done some really nasty things to him because he is crazy is advertising on fox news we have to win without fox he's so stupid he also shared this not even democrats like this woman so what is really going on read truth if you think installing a candidate that nobody voted for is the opposite of democracy save democracy vote trump i thought we were a republican not a democracy huh what happened to that another one here we're not ready for a Marxist president, and lying Kamala Harris is a radical left Marxist, and worse. Now, if you read between the lines, this is him saying, oh my God, she's going to win. Now, amazingly, he tweeted this after his disastrous interview with the National Association of Black Journalists. Crazy Kamala is saying she's Indian, not black. This is a big deal. Stone cold phony. She uses everybody, including her racial identity. Now, he also tweeted about this six days ago as well, but, you know, he seems to be ramping up this whole conspiracy about her not actually being black. Great idea, Don. Keep at it. This is, you know, I've got to say, this is a great strategy because it's really going to hurt Kamala among the people who don't know that there are biracial and multiracial people in this country. There are dozens, I'm sure, and they're all going to be very turned off by Kamala Harris supposedly lying about her identity. It's, it's so fucking idiotic because if you ask like even a random ass white person hey tell me about your heritage they'll go through the list i'm 10 percent german 20 percent irish now apparently it's outrageous though for kamala to be both black and indian and trump thinks that he can exploit this weakness of kamala harris folks he is fucking freaking out and does not know what to do and he's in this stage where he's just throwing everything at the wall to see what sticks but he doesn't realize that it's only hurting him because the things that he's throwing at the wall are hurting him he's hoping that something will hurt kamala but it's hurting him because again i've said this once i'll say it again this is normie repellent when you say oh my god this black woman isn't really black she's lying about her heritage when you be overtly racist and sexist you are turning off independence you are turning off suburban women who might vote republican so the fact that he sees her surging in the polls and responds by shitting his pants and calling her not black, I mean, that just kind of solidifies the fact that these trends are likely to continue if nothing changes. But like if he has full control and his aides don't rein him in, which I don't think that they will, then things are going to get a lot more ugly in this race. And he's going to get much more dumb and racist as time goes on. And I don't think he realizes how much that's going to hurt him. But regardless, continue, Trump, because you're only making the case against you. And we really don't have to do anything. Kamala doesn't really even have to do anything. She could just sit back, watch you implode, and laugh all the way to the White House if this keeps up. So, you know, I don't know if he's going to stick with the whole Kamala isn't black narrative. But the fact that he's doubling down and doesn't know how disastrous this is for him shows you how out of touch he is. And if you just, like, just so you all, if you want more coke, go to Matt Walsh's timeline and you can see he's in full-blown panic mode. You know, he responded to Megan the Stallion and Quavo being at Kamala's rally by basically saying, listen, Democrats have all the celebrities and they haven't even trotted out Taylor Swift yet. It's embarrassing if Republicans bring out some washed-up celebrity in response to this and, you know, we all 
worship them. That's just don't do that. Just focus on policy. Now, I think he's correct to a certain extent, but they can't focus on policy. One, because they have no policy substance. And two, the actual policy substance that they have is all deeply authoritarian and unpopular. What are they going to talk about? Abortion? So there's really, there's no easy path to victory if you're Donald Trump, and you kind of just have to hope that he gets lucky and enough people become anti-Harris between now and November. But I think that these attacks that he's lobbing against her, you know, attacking her for laughing and whatnot and being not black, that's just going to make her seem more sympathetic because this is something that's out of her control. And you making this about identity politics is not a game that you want to play, Donald Trump. But again, by all means, continue. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? 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 <laughs> tree? They not like us. Tree? Tree? You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? 